Hi, I'm Jim. Welcome to training. Sometimes it may seem like doing a high quality installation while providing the best customer experience possible can conflict with your productivity goals, but you can still be highly productive without sacrificing the quality of your work. To help you with this, the installation job aid was created. The steps and tips in the job aid were created by extensively researching the best practices of top performing techs in the company. The installation job aid helps you organize your installation and helps you be as efficient and effective as possible. It's broken up into 12 simple steps. When they're followed systematically, these tips will help you interact with customers, ensure you don't miss any critical steps in the process, and check that you always have the right equipment. We're going to discuss the first five of the 12 steps of the installation job aid in more detail, and we'll highlight some of the tips and tricks of the guide. Let's get started with some pointers to consider before arriving at an appointment. You always need to be prepared to provide best-in-class service. This starts before you even meet the customer. You must have a professional appearance and be mentally prepared to conduct yourself in a professional manner. Always verify that you have the correct tools, equipment, and supplies, and be sure to carefully review the customer's work order. Before you leave for the customer's house, you want to give them a status call. On the call, you want to make sure to give an introduction, your estimated time of arrival, confirm the customer's address, ask if the customer can secure any pets, and verify that someone over 18 is going to be present for the install. Be sure to follow all of the steps for pre-arrival so that you're prepared before showing up at the customer's home. Now that you've arrived, update your status to start in ETA Direct. Next, gather the materials that you're going to need to confirm the customer's order and survey their house. Gathering the right materials at the right time will not only reduce trips to the van, but it will also instill confidence in the customer that you're prepared. Set out the safety cones around your van and head toward the customer's door. As you're walking up to the customer's front door, Briefly look around for line of sight. Line of sight will not be an issue for the vast majority of jobs, but if you think there is a potential line of sight obstruction, such as a north-facing apartment balcony, skip to step four after greeting the customer and determine line of sight first. Consider all options for getting a line of sight, like specialty mounts and arc flipping. With all of these preliminary steps complete, you're now ready to meet the customer. This brings us to step number two, customer confirmation. First, you want to introduce yourself to the customer. Before you enter their home, make sure to put on your boot covers. This shows respect to the customer, and it needs to be done even if they tell you it isn't necessary. Then, confirm the order with the customer. Go over the number of rooms to be installed, the equipment to be installed in each room, the customer's programming, and the commitment that the customer is entering. Doing this before any work begins will help avoid confusion and frustration later on. Helping you prepare for the installation is one of the main reasons the installation job aid was created. Once everything is verified with the customer, you'll begin the site survey portion of the install. The site survey is broken up into two sections. We'll begin first with the receiver and connectivity site survey. This section of the guide will help you plan the interior portion of your install. It will also help you when you're checking for connectivity options in the customer's home. First, identify the location for the first receiver and test the outlet with the receptacle tester. If a penetration is required, determine the penetration location. If the home is pre-wired, tone out the line. Toning out the lines now will save you a trip back to this room later. If internet is pre-wired, test the ethernet connection with your LAN tester at the same time. The green box here provides a tip when toning out lines in a pre-wired room. Using the same colors for toning out rooms will help standardize the process and help you avoid confusion. You will always know that the brown color is used for the first receiver and the red color is used for TV2. Next, you'll want to check the customer's internet and phone connectivity options. Use assumptive techniques and ask the customer where their internet is located. Based on the equipment they have, determine what connectivity devices you'll need to use. Be sure to hand the customer the connectivity brochure to help explain the benefits of connecting their receiver. They can look this over while you do the installation. If the customer has a dual tuner receiver, identify where the second TV will be located. Just like with TV1, you'll want to tone out the line or determine the penetration location. Repeat these steps as needed for each additional receiver. Once this is done, ask the customer if they have a home run box. If so, verify the correct lines with the multi-line identifier. Also, ask the customer about a crawl space, attic, or garage to help you plan your potential cable run. When you're done surveying the inside of the customer's house, you'll begin surveying the outside. This is Section 4, Mounting and Cabling Site Survey. First, determine your grounding options. You want to do this first because there are typically only a few grounding options at most homes. When you find out where you can ground the system, check for line of sight at or near this grounding location. With grounding location and line of sight in mind, 
Decide on a mount location and which type of mount you'll need to use. Consider the cable route and configuration. Then measure or estimate the amount of messenger cable you'll need. Remember that the distance from the ground source to the ground block must be less than 20 feet. It's helpful to estimate the amount of cable you'll need here in the site survey so that you're well prepared when you're gathering materials from the van later. By the time you reach step five, pre-install customer walkthrough, you'll be ready to give your customer the installation plan. This includes the mount location, cable route, penetrations, and receiver locations. Some customers will be more accepting of the installation plan than others, but as it states here, you are the expert. We want you to work with the customer, but be confident about your installation plan and only offer additional options if they're requested. Once you've gained approval from the customer and given an estimation of the job length, head back to the van, status your next customer, and put the tablet in standby mode. The van trips are called out in the installation job aid because this is one of the most important ways the guide helps save you time. Hopefully you're getting a feel for how this guide helps you streamline your installation process. Think of it as a table of contents for the work you're going to do every day. We've just reviewed the first five of the 12 steps outlined in the installation job aid. These steps are all about being prepared and planning for the installation. By doing these steps effectively, you're setting yourself up for success. Next time we'll review steps six through nine, dish preparation, dish installation, grounding, and cabling. These tips and steps we just discussed were designed with your success in mind. We want to give you the tools that you need to be productive and have a successful career at DISH. Thanks for joining us.